Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to show you how you can create looping smoke textures with Mantaflow. And if you take a closer look at this texture, it's really special because it is completely seamless on both sides. So if you're scaling it over geometry, you can actually have it repeating several times without any seams. And the other special thing about this texture is that it loops seamlessly. This is actually a transparent texture, and you can place this into your 3D scenes wherever you want and it can end up being really handy. All right, we're gonna start out by going into front view with one on the number pad, and I'm gonna go control, alt, and zero on the number pad to set my camera to my view. Now at this point, I'm gonna select the cube here, and we're just gonna scale this up to be about the size of the view, and it doesn't have to be quite so tall, so let's go S and Z to scale that down a little bit on the Z axis. And now I'm just gonna select the camera, and go G, Z, and move this up to about this point. Now to kind of see what we're doing inside here, I'm gonna go Z and then toggle X-ray, and we can see a nice X-ray view of what's going on in here. So this big cube is gonna be our domain for the smoke. Let's go Shift A, add mesh and cube to add an emitter object. I'm gonna go G and Z and kind of move this down to the bottom and scale it up on the X with S and X. Let's select the camera once more, and instead of having perspective in this, we want it just a flat-on view of our smoke. So let's go over to the camera settings, switch from perspective to orthographic. Now the camera gets real huge. We can just grab this and move it up a little bit. So we don't really want this cube to be in the render at all. We just want the smoke coming off of it. So that's why I'm moving the camera up to just barely exclude it from the frame. Okay. So now we've got our domain set up, we've got our flow object set up, let's start setting up the physics of this. So if we go over here into the physics tab with the emitter selected, we can go fluid. And it doesn't seem like we'd use fluid since this is smoke, but that's how they do it these days with Mantaflow. So let's switch this type to be a flow object. And there's not a whole lot of settings we're going to tweak here. Just under the flow behavior where it says geometry, we're going to switch that to be inflow. So it keeps smoking instead of just a little poof that's the size of the geometry. And now where all the magic happens is with the domain object. If we select that and go once again, fluid, and switch this to be a domain, immediately if we play the animation, we can see we get a nice big poof of smoke going on. Now if you look from the camera view, <laughs> this is completely filling up the view, which is all right for now, I guess. What we are gonna wanna do in the domain is set the resolution divisions to be 64, and this is a bit higher resolution, so it can help us get a bit of a better idea of what's gonna happen. Now, a note on the real-time playback with Mantaflow. Usually, what we do is bake it so that we can see the results, but if you want it to play back in the viewport, you wanna have the type set to replay, which it is set to by default, but sometimes it gets a little glitchy, and to reset it, if you change some settings, you just want to go here and re-click replay and that will clear the cache and you go back to the start frame and there you go okay so at this point if we play it forward you can see we've just got this giant wall of smoke that comes up which is all right but we probably want it to be fading out before it gets to the top of the frame so that it doesn't look like there's a seam there when we render it out to a texture so the way to do that is to go down into dissolve and if we just check that by default it's set to five and eventually, I think we probably want it somewhere near 17. And a quick note here, the lower your resolution, probably the lower the time you'll want. Eventually, we're going to set it up to be 128, which is real nice and high resolution. So we want the dissolve time to be a little bit higher. Before we go ahead and set up the resolution, let's go Shift-A and add in a force field. And if we just go Turbulence here, set this to somewhere around maybe 1.5 or 2, we can get a lot more interesting looking smoke. Aha, look at this craziness. As I mentioned, since it's at a division of 64, it still goes up through the top of the frame and just bumps into the top, so we're going to have to fix that in a second here. One thing I am going to do is just scale up the domain a little bit because you can kind of see right next to the edge of frame, it starts to disappear. So let's scale this up a bit beyond the camera view so that doesn't happen. And also, if you want things to go a little bit faster, you can check Adaptive Domain. And what this does is when the smoke size is smaller, it just has the domain around that small size. And as the smoke gets bigger, the domain gets a little bit larger to accompany that. Okay, these settings look pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is go up to the resolution divisions and I'm gonna set it to 128. 
Now this is a pretty beefy resolution, so instead of baking that out in real time, what I'm going to do is go down to the cache here, set this to modular, and then I've got the bake folder all set up right near my project file, so that's alright. Another thing we want to be aware of is the scene frames. 250 will work pretty well for me, and we're also going to bake out 250 frames of smoke. So with all that set, I'm going to go up here where it says bake data, and I'll see you in a little bit. All right, well, I have finished the bake. What you're probably going to see with this is that it gets really big at the start and then just kind of calms down a little bit, maybe around frame 90 or 80. I'd say probably 80. And with this, we're just going to kind of cut off the start part where it starts warming up and just go straight to the part where it's fading out a little bit and it's already going. So I'm going to go playback and set start frame wherever that point is for you. And if we look down at the end here, you can see, I, I don't really know what happened there, but everything just goes all over the place, which is not very nice. So obviously there's a few little glitches once in a while. We can go to frame 205, and we'll just cut it off there, because that's when the insanity starts. Playback once again, and set end frame here. And we've got about 125 frames to work with here, which is a few less than I had hoped since the end kind of blew up but it'll be enough to work with. Okay, so let's set this up to render out nicely. If we go into rendered view, you can see not a whole lot is going on here. So I'm going to go up to my render tab here and switch to cycles. And another thing we're probably gonna want is adaptive sampling. I'm gonna take this down to actually kind of low. If you go maybe around 50 or so, that might not look quite as good, but it'll render a little bit faster. And if you would like it to look good, and you have a really nice computer, the higher you put that, the better it'll look. Another thing I'd like to do is go down to Advanced and just check this little clock, and that will switch the random noise seed for every frame so that we don't have a consistent noise pattern for the samples. And when you get really low samples like this, that's probably a good thing to check. If we go down here to Film, where you want to check Transparent, another thing I'm going to do is go to the World Settings here, and just make the background black so that we don't have any extra lighting going on. And I'm just going to grab this lamp up here and switch that to be an area lamp. I'm going to go Alt-R to clear the rotation and Alt-G to center that in the middle of the world. And then I'm just going to go G and Y, move that back a little bit on the Y axis, and then just rotate that so that it is facing towards the camera. So R, 90, and probably negative 90 will work. Okay. We can turn up the size of the rectangle, and that'll just widen things out a little bit. So we have some really nice backlighting on our smoke. And if we go into the rendered view, we can see nothing is really happening. So let's fix that by adding a material here. I'm just going to split my view here and go to the shading editor. And immediately you can see there's this principled node, and that's stuck into the surface. We don't want that, so let's go X and shader, and principled volume is what we want. So I'm going to drop the volume into the volume instead of the surface. And if we take a look at this, we've got a smoke texture. We can turn up the density a little bit if you want. Of course, that all depends on your taste, what you're going for. If you want thick smoke or thin, wispy kind of steam stuff, I think it looks pretty nice around 2.8. Now, if you hit F12 and render this out, if you take a close look at this render once it's finished, you can see there's a lot of parts that kind of have up and down lines. And I think that has to do with the way Blender calculates where the smoke should be and shouldn't be. It has kind of like a grid pattern. To get rid of some of this, what I'm going to do is rotate the camera view so that it's looking from the side, so that there's a lot more to blend together instead of just straight on. So I'm going to use period on the keyboard and set the pivot place to be the 3D cursor. And then I'm going to go R and Z. And assuming your 3D cursor is in the center of the world, we'll rotate right around that. And I'm just going to put it at a bit of an angle, so like this, and that'll blend things together a little bit, and it'll look a little bit better then. Okay, this is all set, and it looks pretty good. If you look closely though, you can see it's still kind of noisy. So one thing I'm going to do real quick to fix that is go into compositing. I'm going to check use nodes, and in between the render layers and the composite node, I'm going to go shift A, filter, and just drop in a little bit of blur. Maybe set that to around four or five pixels. And if we take a look at this with a viewer node, if you hit M, you can mute this blur node and see what it looked like before. 
yeah, not a huge difference, but it's a little bit less grainy, so that's nice. All right, I think we're just about ready to render it out here. And the output properties here, I'm going to go down to output and select where I want that to go. And down here in the file format and everything, one thing we might want to do is just turn the compression down to zero, because we're going to be using these images quite a bit, and we don't want to compress it too much just yet. But hey, once you have all those settings set, we can go up to render and hit render animation. Okay. New Blender window. We're going to process those images and make sure that they're seamless and that they loop perfectly. So I'm going to go into File and New and Video Editing, and I'm just going to go Shift A and find my image sequence. So I found my image sequence. You just select everything with A and then import that in here. You can see this is what we've got, and that's looking pretty good, although it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to grab this strip with G, move it up with Y, and then go Shift A add in a black color underneath it so we can see a little bit better what we're doing. And I'm just going to drag the ends of that out. And the first thing we want to do is make this so that it loops. So if we set the end frame to be the end over here, and I just played it back, you could see there's a little bit of a jarring part there when it ends and starts over again. And we don't want that, so I'm going to go to the center here and go K, and just cut this clip in half. And I'm going to put the part at the back at the start, <laughs> and the clip from the front, and I'm going to swap that to the back. I want to make sure that there's a little bit of overlap here. And this part here is where we're going to fade from this clip to this clip. And if we go to the end here, I'm going to reset the end frame since it got a little bit shorter. And we can start working on this. Now if we select the top clip and go over to where it says Opacity and hit I, that will put in a keyframe there. And by the time we get to the end of this clip, we want the opacity to be zero. So I'm going to turn that down to zero and hit I once more. You can see this nice little curve of it fading out at the same time as that's going on. We want the bottom one to be fading in. So I'm going to go here around a little bit before the end and go I, set that to one. And at the start, we want it to be at zero. So once again, turn that to zero and I. So the background fades in as the foreground fades out. If we go to the end here and just play that back, you can see since this frame was right before this frame, it loops seamlessly. And we've got our little seam in the center, but it's pretty well hidden by a nice blend. Now, once again, same thing. We are gonna wanna render this image sequence out. I still don't think we want the compression at this point. So let's pick the folder to render this out to and do that once more. And before you go ahead and render that, I just remembered something. We definitely want to hide this color strip because we want it to be a transparent background still. So I'm going to select that with the left mouse button and hit H. Okay, let's render that out. Okay, so I've just gone back and imported that image sequence that we just rendered out. And I'm going to select these two clips and hide them because we don't need them anymore. And I'm going to bring back the black background just so we can see what we're doing once more. And now we have a looping animation and what we want to do with it is make it so that these two edges match up. So if we wanted to put the smoke texture on a really long mesh, we could do that without stretching it, and we could just kind of keep duplicating the same segment without there being a seam. So the way we're going to go ahead and do that is actually pretty fun. I'm going to duplicate this strip with Shift D and bring it up to around here, and I'm going to duplicate it actually once more and bring that up once more, <laughs> and this is where it gets kind of crazy. What we're going to do is move this off to the side, and then we're going to move this off to the other side. And let me just show you how to do that. I'm going to select the bottom strip and hide that with H. Then with the top one here selected, I'm going to go Shift A, Effect Strip, and Transform. And we can see the transparent textures show up again. That's because the transform strips immediately set the compositing type to be Replace instead of Alpha Over. So let's just switch back to that. And for this one, I'm going to set the position to be 50, so that it's right off to the side. If we hide the top one real quick, you can see, now I'm going to select the top one, go Alt-H, unhide that, and we're going to go Shift-A, and add another transform. Once again, let's set this to Alpha Over, and for this one, the X position, we're going to set to be negative 50. So now, we can see this big ugly seam in the middle but the two sides are matching up perfectly. Now the way we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this seam in the middle is by going up to this plus mark, and we're gonna go general, and we're gonna go down to visual effects and masking. And we don't need these windows at the top, so I'm gonna collapse those, and I'm gonna open that looping image sequence 
that we had before. It's not super important to have the exact animation, but you do need a clip in here to start masking. So I'm just gonna drop that in. All right, now up here, where it says new, I'm gonna add in a new mask and we're gonna do something real simple. I'm just gonna go control and click and I'm just gonna make a little bit of a square in the center like this. And I guess it's kind of nice to have that slightly parallel there. And with this mask, we're gonna make everything in the center inside it disappear. I'm gonna go shift and control and drag out from one of these points with the left mouse button. All right, that's gonna look pretty good. Let's go back to our video editor here and start applying this. What we're gonna wanna do is make it so the seam in the middle disappears. So let's start with the bottom one. I'm gonna select the transform layer and go down to where it says modifiers over here. And I'm gonna hit that and go add strip modifier mask and set this to be mask and choose our mask here. Now immediately you can see we got rid of the wrong part of it. The seam is still here. So let's go back to our masking, go down to where it says mask, and there's this little thing here that says opacity, and it's got an invert checkbox on the side of it. So let's just check that. Now working our way back to video editing, we can see if we reload this, so just X out of it and put it back in, our seam is gone. And we can do this to the clip on the left as well. So select the transform strip in modifiers, mask, set that to mask, and let's use our mask. Now we're completely missing the seam in the middle. Let's actually add something back in there. If we go down to the bottom where our original looped clip is, we can unhide that. And now everything is gonna be super thick except for the center, which we don't really want. So I'm gonna go over to where it says add modifier, mask, and we're gonna add in another mask, but this time we just want the center showing. We don't want the sides showing. So if we go back to masking, we can see we've got our mask here and I'm gonna hit the little two button and that'll duplicate the mask, and we're gonna uncheck the invert. Now if we go back and select that mask for our base strip here, so I think it's mask 002. If we just hide everything on top, we can take a look. Yeah, it's just in the middle, so that's good. And if we go Alt-H, then we've got the sides, and the edges of that are seamless, and the center is seamless, and it loops seamlessly. Okay, so there's one more step that I'm gonna do, and that is to make it so that the center is not doing the exact same as the sides are doing. If you look really closely here, you can see this kind of wisp, and that is doing exactly what the side is doing here. So if we go once again to this base clip and just cut it right in the middle, we can move this to the end, and we can move the other one to that part, and just bump them right up together. They should work perfectly seamlessly. And now the little blend that we made before that you can actually still see down here is happening on the start and the end for the middle. And now our middle here is not matching up with the side, which is kind of crazy, but it seems to be working, which is great. Once again, don't forget to hide the black color down here because we do want a transparent background. So once you got that all set, let's once again render it out. All right, there's our result. Next week, I'm planning to make a tutorial for a really cool shadow gate, and that tutorial is gonna be incorporating this smoke texture. So if you're interested in visual effects and you don't wanna miss next week's tutorial, there's a link in the description that says five tips for integrating CG into live action footage. And when you click on that, it'll sign you up for my email list. And I'll make sure the first thing I send you is that video on five tips for integrating your CG objects into live action footage. As well as that, next week, when I upload the tutorial on the crazy shadow gate effect, you'll be one of the first people to know. But hey, I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!